Hey everybody, welcome back to Webster's Math Class. We're going to do us a little bit more algebra today. We're working on solving equations using the multiplication principle. Remember, the multiplication principle says we can multiply or divide an equation by anything as long as we multiply or divide both sides of the equation by the same thing. Okay? So we've got a couple of equations up here, and I can see it. You're already panicking. I can see it the fractions. Fractions really have a tendency to cause people to panic. No worries here, this is going to be really painless, very simple little uh, operation here to handle solving these equations, taking care of the fraction. Okay, so we've got this first equation, 3 fifths x equals 12. Alright, so what I've got is this term 3 fifths x. The 3 fifths is a coefficient that's actually multiplied by the x. Okay. Now, if I could get the 3 fifths off the x, if I could make it cancel out, go away, I'd have x by itself. Now, I want to isolate that x, y'all. So that's, that's exactly what I want to do. So what I think I'll do is I'll come over here to this left side of the equation, and I'll multiply on this side of the equation by the reciprocal of 3 fifths. Now, why the reciprocal of 3 fifths? Well, essentially what happens is when, when I flip that 3 fifths over and I do this multiplication, the 5 cancels the 5 and the 3 cancels the 3. And, and so it, the, the reason I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal is to make the whole fraction cancel itself out, leaving me with the x by itself. Now, I can't forget the right side of the equation, because remember, whatever I did on the left side, I must do the same thing on the right side. Okay, so I'm going to come over here on this side of the equation. I'm going to take my 12, okay, and I'm going to multiply that times 5 thirds also. Because remember, if I multiply by 5 thirds on one side, I must multiply by 5 thirds on the other side. All right, now you get into some fraction skills here, some real fraction skills. To multiply this right here, first of all, I'm going to take my whole number and put it over a 1. Any whole number can be written as a fraction by writing a 1 underneath it. Then I'm going to look for anything I can simplify, anything that I can cancel, cross-cancel here, that'll help me. So I see uh, the top 12, the bottom 3, 3 goes into 12 4 times, and 3 goes into 3 1 time. And so 4 times 5 then is 20, and 1 times 1 is 1. So in the end, my answer is 20 over 1, which is 20. That'll be the solution to this equation. All right, I want you to pause the video for a second um, and pop into this one and see what you can do with this one, and then we'll come back and work it together. Hey, welcome back everybody. Let's, uh, let's take a look at this quick equation here ourselves. We've got negative 2 fifths x equals negative 15. The negative 2 fifths, you should have known, is a uh, coefficient on the x. We'd like to get rid of the negative 2 fifths. All we're going to do to get rid of that negative 2 fifths, and I'm going to create myself a little space here by erasing our previous problem. All we need to do to, uh, to get rid of that negative 2 fifths is to come in and multiply by negative 5 over 2. Okay? So I'll come there, negative 2 fifths x. Alright? So you see when I flipped it over, essentially it set up <clears throat> that I would cancel out uh, numerator with denominator, numerator with denominator, leaving x by itself. So if I'm going to multiply that left side, by negative 5 over 2. I got to come over here with this negative 15 and also multiply it by negative 5 over 2. All right, now I'm going to put my negative 15 over a 1 to get a little bit more of a fraction field right there. And I'm going to look for anything I might be able to cancel. Dad, gum it, I don't see anything. I don't see anything that'll cancel. The 15 won't cancel with the 2. The 5 with the 1, nothing there. So I just got to work this out. I'll multiply straight across here. Negative 15 times negative 5. Now, a negative times a negative is going to be a positive. Um, 15 times 5 is actually going to work out to be 75. And then 1 times 2 is 2. Now, that is a simplified fraction. Uh, 75 over 2 is a simplified fraction. If we wanted to change it to a mixed number, we can by dividing... 2 into 75, 
and uh, we wouldn't do it as a decimal, we would do it as a mixed number. So 2 into, into 7 goes 3, uh, there's a 6, 2 into 15 goes 7, 7, there's a 14, there's a 1 half. So if you list your answer as an improper fraction in simplest form, it'll be 75 over 2. If they ask for a mixed number as an answer, then it'd be 37 and a half. If they ask for a decimal, you could just pop in 75 divided by 2 on your calculator and you get 37.5. It really comes down to identifying how they want the answer. They may ask for just a simplified fraction here. They may ask for a mixed number simplified here. Or they may say, give your answer as a, uh, as a decimal number. You, in critical thinking, you always want to identify the question and how whoever's asking the question wants the answer to be expressed. Okay, so I want you to pop back into uh, your practice problem right now, do some similar exercises, get used to using the multiplication principle in this way with, with fraction coefficients, and, and uh, I'll plan on seeing you next time.